All right, so I have roughly selected around what my foreground is. And I can just duplicate that and have that shape like a puzzle piece. The problem with that way of doing it is that it doesn't give me any overlap at the bottom. So the only edge I really need to cut out is the one that overlaps with things behind it. So instead of this shape, I only want that shape. And I'm just going to grow this selection to give me a lot of overlap for this jello. Right? And then I'm going to duplicate it. So it's again kind of thinking in three dimensions a little bit. And I'm going to um, erase the smart layer. John, this will help your file. Erase the smart layer once you've cut out of it, because that saves a whole lot of memory within the Photoshop file. It's not having to remember these huge, these huge images. And you only are using what you need to use. Okay, so now I've got this kind of lake of jello. <laughs> and I can decide, okay, do I want to do anything with something else in front of it? Well, maybe this will become a foreground element. like some boulders here, and I'm going to cut those out of the jello just like so. Find that shape and kind of cut around it. And that's all I need to duplicate because the bottom goes off the edge of my composition. So now I have far background, background, middle ground, foreground, near foreground, right? And I can play with how I combine them. And very often, I'm still missing some things like this stuff over here, right? And this doesn't feel connected yet. So now I need to fill up a little bit. But I've done my first job, which is to fill up the white space. So let's just get another near foreground element. I was thinking of, of something deserty. I have lots of pictures of um, whipped cream <laughs> and apple pie and brownies. There's this really cool photo of a leaf that was on Pixabay. It just looks really alien and strange, so maybe I'll use that. got this little fur on it, which is cool. And I'm just worried about how it works for my composition, right? So how, how to select that, how to clean it up. The problem with this, this is a macro photograph, and you see how its edges are soft. So I actually need to select this one by hand in order to kind of isolate the edges or create a false rough edge because this needs to be sharp and in focus in the foreground. So I'm just using my tablet and taking chunks of it, drawing around little hairs, and then deleting them. Oh, but in order to delete them directly, I have to rasterize that smart layer. And I think this is going to work OK, because I, I plan to have some heat um, distortion coming off of that jello. I'm going to treat it like a lava pool. I'm going to show you how I can do those kind of things. So I'm kind of defining a, a sharp edge just by cutting it in with my lasso. And then I don't need to worry about this because I just put it underneath my other near foreground layer. And there we go. So that kind of works, but maybe I want to bring in something else. This is a volcanic rock. You can layer for all of these things. What I love about some of this close photography I don't want to grow it that much because I don't want the, the pixels to distort. But what's great about a lot of this close photography is it's just shot on white. 
So it's super easy to cut out. Just use your magic wand with contiguous. And voila. I'll select the inverse and duplicate. And then delete the smart, la the smart layer. And you've got a cutout. And just like I did with the sky, I could play with kind of compositing the leaf and the rock together a little bit. Or I can just move the rock behind the leaf, help that transition. Lots of different options. Let's get rid of this bottom. Remember, you only have to worry about what's within your frame here. And if you miss something, just like we did with the cartoon jumble, you can just delete it out. My tree layer, which I really need for scale, if I move that up, I can see how I need to kind of work between these two things. All right, so now I realize that where I need the most help, oh, this is a nice one I can use for the foreground. Realize where I need a lot of the help is in the um, in that kind of foreground lake. One thing I like about compositing is you just get really, really inspired by the crazy references out there in the world. So I can do a rough cutout here. I like this. And then select the inverse, duplicate it, get rid of the smart layer. And then I can go in and clean this up later. Right now, I can see where the weakness is of my composition. And one way I can help it is to just take the rectangular marquee tool, which we haven't used too much, and just use it to cut, like we did with the cartoon jumble, the excess stuff away. Not all of it, you want a little bit of excess overlap always. But I can go through these turned on layers, especially in the foreground, especially of that leaf that was such a large reference and cut it away. And I can take my far background layers that are still smart layers and rasterize them. Because even though you can get seduced by all the cool assets you found, you want to stay focused on what your postcard composition is. And I can use that rectangular marquee tool and delete away, delete away, delete away, delete away. Same thing over here. And compositing is very almost improvisational. You know, you, you have a vision for how you're going to put the reference together. But you react to kind of the quality of the, the assets you found and you work with those. So I'm going to trim a little bit more from this foreground. Just to keep it easy to, to contemplate, even without the guides. Okay, so what can I do with this lake of fire? Well, luckily, I got some um, lava reference. 
and fire reference and heat distortion. One I liked especially was this. And because this is a softer kind of texture that I'm using, the softer an element is, like clouds, like heat distortion, the more you can enlarge it and not have to worry too much. Your enemy is always the hard edges of the photo. So I'm gonna composite in a few things to use as the middle ground. I'm just gonna show you how I would blend them together. They were all taken by the same photographer on Pixabay. So they're all the same resolution, all similar camera settings, obviously capturing this lava doing its thing. So just very quickly, this is just really rough compositing. I'm going to rasterize all of them so I can just delete directly from them. And I'm going to work from the top to the bottom using that soft edged 100% opacity eraser, fairly large. And really allowing it to overlap. This is how the panorama setting in your cameras works. This way, even out of just these three photos, I build kind of an original composition of this lava that's my own. All right, so when you're doing a lot of erasing, a lot of adjusting, and you have a lot of layers for something that's high resolution, sometimes your computer will start to lag a little bit. You'll notice that my, my or I noticed my eraser just jumped. So this is a good reminder that you want to use your history settings. So you can see that big jump there. You can use your history settings to go back to before your tool stopped responding to you. And at that point, you want to save your file. Make sure you erase any smart layers that remain that you're not using, anything turned off that you don't need. And then you're going to save and you want to save it as your name and then a description. So I'm going to call this Carl assignment one land landscape composition. And I'm also going to close this earlier one I showed you in the first video, you know, where I had all my notes. So it's going to close that so that Photoshop isn't running more programs than it needs to. So by saving it, that helps free up its running memory and will help your tools kind of stay with you because this file is now one gigabyte large. And once you get above one gigabyte, no matter how good your computer is, the processing within the program can be challenged. So I'm going to show you a blending effect now, which I really like. So you see how those two seam together really well. And it's using a really large eraser. 